In the very first lecture for the introduction of uh, bioinformatics and computational biology, we mentioned different levels of bioinformatics research. I want to just reiterate this so that you can, you know, now that you have been in this course for the whole semester, hopefully understand the, the, the difference of the different levels. Uh, the uh, level zero is modeling for modeling sake. Uh, we actually didn't bother to even teach you this. Um, it's it's usually a question, a bioinformatics question that nobody really care about. They are not really published in high profile journals. Um, they are not really read or cited well. Hopefully you don't even need to go there. And uh, what we start in this course is to teach you how to do level one bioinformatics research. Um, you analyze uh, uh, collaborators data or, or just basically you use um, public tools to analyze data and generate some hypothesis. You, you say, oh, you do QC, does the experiment work? Um, do, do we see some meaningful differential comparisons? Uh, does that mean something? Is this related to the disease, right? Is it uh, um, important biological problem? Are there existing algorithms to analyze the data? So if, for example, that long answer where I showed you is typical level one bioinformatics. You have some data. What are you going to do? Right? So you think, oh, what tool did I learn in this course? And check out, right? Or you just Google on the web, you know, what, what algorithm can I use to analyze this new type data experimental type and try to learn this. Um, but um, there are different levels of uh, level. You, there are different um, you, you can do the level one bioinformatics uh, analysis well, which means that you understand what your experimental collaborator is trying to answer. You pick the really interesting questions and you are using the algorithm in a kind of smart way. You help them generate the hypothesis and you even help them figure out the experimental validation to do in order to validate your hypothesis, right? And so that new experimental validation generate new data to help you refine your, your, your hypothesis and so on. And how much are you using public data to help them narrow down the hypothesis? Um, yeah, does it really have novel biological finding or your collaborator already had very clear idea and they just want you to help them generate the figures? so that they can publish the hypothesis, even though you find the hypothesis to be wrong. Um, yeah, so um, you can see this, does the experimental figures and the computational figures alternate? That actually is a very important uh, uh, idea to see how much is the informatics analysis helping to refine the hypothesis um, to help with the experimental validation and then generate new data for the experiments for the computational analysis. And so this is kind of a more iterative process. And also, um, you, usually if you see the alternating experimental computational figures, and usually the, the first and the corresponding authors will also be joined between the experimental and computational groups. Um, yeah, so the familiarity of bioinformatics algorithm and understanding of the biological questions are very, very important. And, uh, you know, th through these collaborations, hopefully you can learn the domain biological knowledge as well and the motivate the uh, methodology development. And just here, just be, be careful. Don't be a data janitor. Um, you want to look for collaborators who care about working with you to generate a hypothesis, they value your, your input. And if the data prove the hypothesis to be wrong, they are open-minded enough to even consider this new hypothesis rather than um, here's our hypothesis, here's the data. I want to just generate this figure, you know, please help us generate the figure. That's it. Um, so, um, Level, level one bioinformatics is kind of what we teach students in this course to do. For level two bioinformatics is really for algorithm development um, in order for us to QC, uh, analyze the data, uh, compare. So, so basically the algorithms that we teach you 
those developers are doing the level two bioinformatics. I mean, think about BWA, think about uh, Salmon, think about DEC, right? The, the, the groups that develop gene ontology, GSEA analysis, SURAT developers, and so on. So they have a keen eye on the most cost-effective new techniques and what are the questions, you know, what are the uh, remaining quantitative or remaining uh, a computational bottleneck and they use sound statistics or best machine learning practices to develop a very good user-friendly software so that more people can 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 utilize the the result so if you think about level one bioinformatics it's not scalable uh, for every collaborator you have to kind of repeat this analysis to regenerate different hypotheses you can only use published tools to help one group at a time but with level two bioinformatics, because they generate an algorithm, BWA is being cited by probably 20,000 times, many, many groups can benefit from the result of this one algorithm, right? Uh, so is uh, database and web servers, many groups can, can use it. Um, the key is for the developer, um, by the way, these are not necessarily published in high profile journals. Um, the, the, of course, if you can publish in Nature Science, that's great. But a lot of the you know algorithms are probably just published in bioinformatics or genome biology or even uh, uh, lower journals. But if it's really used and cited a lot, that's the real value. Um, and so it, it requires a group to continue to maintain and update the algorithm or the web server with new data and new you know with the new data. Um, or new challenges, providing new features to overcome those challenges and, and adding more features. Um, and so in order for the group, to, the, the informatics group to do well, they need to understand their biological domain. Um, for example, um, there are groups that are really good with alignment. They stay close to their alignment area. There are people who really care about epigenetics. They develop the algorithm focusing on um, you know, transcription epigenetic gene regulation. There are groups that just focus on proteomics. There are groups who are just focused on small RNA uh, or, or immunology or single cell. These are kind of very different domains. And in order to do well, you need to provide the complete solution. If you only just provide a little bit, you think about SURAT now, a lot of these packages now provide from the initial mapping to the QC, batch effect removal, differential analysis, identify markers, uh, you know, visualization, uh, downstream integration, uh, everything together. And so if you care about that experimental technique or that domain, a lot of the solutions that become popular provide the complete solution to the whole domain's problem. Um, yeah, so uh, as we mentioned, the user adoption is more important than publication journals impact factor. Um, even if it's published in bioinformatics, if it's cited 20,000 times, that's a really successful algorithm. Um, so time is the ultimate measure of, of success. Is the algorithm widely used and widely cited? Do people use it to really make real findings? That's that's the key of a success. Um, and here, um, the, the key is to do well by doing good. Um, when you develop a tool that benefits so many people, uh, so many other users, um, usually this, this person is getting the respect from the field and also getting more research funding to support their methods development. And then level three bioinformatics is now computational biologists in a biologist's role um, make biological discoveries, usually from public data integration and modeling. Um, this is true data mining um, because there are so many papers already published with public data. Can you really make a discovery? And so the this level three bioinformatics research required the computational biologists to have their unique biological angle. They care about a specific biological problem. The algorithm can be developed in their group, but it could just be a, a smart use of existing tools, but answer a very um, interesting biological question or looking at the data in a fresh angle. Um, 
and uh, yeah, so you need to make a real biological uh, discoveries rather than uh, putting numbers on theories. So there are some previous theories already, and they are just trying to fake the analysis to, to support that. Hopefully, it's a, a really novel discovery. Um, one difficult thing is that sometimes these kind of uh, hypothesis generation require some experimental validation. Uh, and that experimental validation can be the informatics group themselves, because sometimes um, the groups that really care about the biological questions, they, they have some um, experimental capability to validate the hypothesis, but it could also be an experimental collaborator. So for example, my group engaged in the level one informatics, so help my immunologist collaborator. And so hopefully if I generate a hypothesis, my my uh, immunologist experimental collaborator is willing to help me do some validation. Right? So you, you, you help them with their analysis, they help you with your uh, experimental validation. Um, and then um, recently there, well, recent years, there are more and more also level X uh, bioinformatic research, which is uh, integrative paper from big science consortium. These are team science, major consortium, sometimes um, you can see this uh, in code, TCGA, uh, the, the whole uh, like GTEx consortium and so on. So uh, some of these papers have numbers on the paper title, like uh, um, profiling of a thousand uh, lung cancer, for example. That's, you can see that's, that's, that's a level X team science project. So there are usually significant efforts used to generate resource for the community. Um, usually these level X papers, uh, the data is more important. Yes, because they have so many new data, uh, new, so much new data, they, there is some interesting biological analysis. So the informatician helped to integrate this together to make some initial attempt at a discovery. The publications are usually in high profile journals and highly cited, um, not necessarily from the finding, but even the data itself is worth a lot of citations. Uh, although the authorship, you know, who is on the first or last authors, um, sometimes depending on the internal politics of the consortium dynamics. And so the trainees who are in these type of level X team science papers, if they are the first authors, they usually get into good, you know, they you know, get a good first author paper in nature or science, they can get a faculty positions, but they need, you know, they, they learn valuable experience working in a team, but they need to learn to become truly independent scientists once they become independent, you know, like they're in a faculty position, they are out of the consortium. Can they stand on their own? Um, and so uh, informatics groups should, I think a good informatics group should do level one, two, three, and X. They should do all three, maybe with a slight preference for one, but try not to just do one alone. Uh, and also, especially the level X, researchers need to be careful they don't lose the first three okay so um so for advices to excel in computational biologists for students in this course if you want to be a good computational biologist i hope you can love both the biological discovery and the quantitative skills right um try to actively follow the field from the literature, from going to conferences or listening to talks, from following social networks such as Twitter and blogs, so you know the state of the art. Um, don't be afraid to learn a new experimental technique or new computational methods. Um, I'm hoping through this course, if you can you know, follow up to this point, you are no problem. You won't be afraid to, to really try it. Um, for computational biologists, we have to be careful to bet on the new experimental technologies. It takes tremendous effort to develop a computational tool for a, a method, but if this is not so popular, you bet on the wrong horse, your method will not be cited a lot. And so make sure you focus on the technique that has more promise, because there, uh, the method, your method might be used by a lot of people, and also there will be more data generated on that data platform, which you can also later on do uh, integration uh, to make discoveries, right? Um, and also learn to think of creative ways to squeeze more insights from public data. Um, for example, uh, encode uh, in data or TCGA. I mean, the data has been generated and the original paper were published, but still more people are using the published data to make new discoveries from those. 
that's when a computational biologist really become the level three. They can stand on their own, they can make discoveries. Um, and also look deeper into unexpected results or outliers. Um, a lot of times you might see, huh, this result is kind of different from what you expected. Then try to use other public data to see, is this, is this phenomenon just from my data or it's actually a general phenomenon? And is this coming from an experimental technique problem bias or this is actually a real biological phenomenon? For example, uh, super enhancers. It's just if you look at K27 acetylation signals, they are outlier genes. They are super strong, right? They have really wide and tall peaks. Oh, it turns out these genes are super important. And so pay attention to those unexpected or outlier results. And uh, because computational biology is interdisciplinary between statistics, computer science, biology, and you know, genomics, um, having communication skills will make sure that we are able to talk to the different uh, pe people with different domain knowledge and make them appreciate what we are doing. Right? So you can really reach both the experimental biologists and experimental biologists to you can talk their language so that they appreciate what you are doing. Um, so um, in, in closing, uh, I want to show you, this is Susan Hockfield. Um, he was the MIT president at the time. And in the World Economic Forum, she says, you know, 20, 21st century will be defined by biology. And I'm hoping that from the recent COVID pandemic, you can see how important um, biology is defining our lives now. Um, I also want to show you, um, we have this uh, in the first lecture, um, 2002 Nobel laureate in the 2008 interview um, says that we presently has huge amount of data that are largely unassimilated. I have discovered that while there are rewards of collecting data and distributing data, there is little if any efforts for organizing this. Um, it is what I call low input, meaning not thinking carefully before, high throughput, meaning that you generate a lot of genomics, high throughput data, and no output science, meaning that data is not actually used to answer a real biological question to make a real discovery. Uh, but this is saying that, well, first of all, 21st century is defined by biology, and biology is defined by high throughput technologies, but you know, high throughput biology is defined by computational biology. You know, if you can't really understand the data or analyze or making sense out of the data, you, you, you are just wasting money. And so I hope in this course, you know, you have learned all of the useful things. Um, and uh, I hope you can take the skills now and practice, practice a lot more uh, computational biology and use it to advance biological discovery. Okay, so thank you so much for staying on in the course. I, I hope uh, you, um, I hope uh, you you enjoy the end of the semester and um, use informatics well later in your career. All right, thank you.